Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Navarna's Public Health Forum discussion. Today, we'll be talking about a very important topic, which is tuberculosis and the TB Mukt Panchayat Initiative in India. Uh, I think some of you are joining us for the first time. To just tell you what Navarna is, uh, Navarna is a public health information and advocacy platform which was started last year in July. Public Health Forum is one of our methods of uh, taking discussion around public health topics closer to people and making such discussions more accessible. And in today's discussion, we'll be discussing about TB Mukt Panchayat Initiative in India, which was launched in March 2023. We are closer to 2025, and as we get closer, our aim of eliminating tuberculosis from India looms large around us. And this is an initiative which has given us some hope uh, in this initiative, the Ministry of Panchayati Raj will be collaborating with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare to eliminate tuberculosis from panchayats, to give responsibility to the panchayats to take care of patients with people with tuberculosis. And to discuss this very topic, how sustainable is this, what all should be included, what is the role of research, what are the roadblocks that uh, we have experienced so far. We have uh, four experts joining us today. And I'll be introducing them one by one. Uh, so our first speaker is Dr. Swati Krishna. Uh, Swati is a public health physician and researcher who completed her MBBS uh, from Jubilee Mission Medical College, Trishur, Kerala, and did her MD in community medicine from CMC Vellar. She's currently working with KEM Hospital Research Center, which is an NGO in rural Pune, and is also a fellow in the India Health Policy and Systems Research. She works closely with the state and district NTEP machinery in various domains of TB elimination. Swati has also been my teacher uh, while I was a medical student. Uh, thanks a lot, Swati, for joining today. And she'll be telling us a bit about uh, what her experiences have been, a bit about the project, this whole uh, TB MOOC Panchayat initiative, and what her experiences have been as a collaborator. Uh, over to you, Swati. Now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Parth. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you, Nivarna, for uh, organizing uh, this particular discussion on TB Muk Panchayat. And I'm very privileged to share the same uh, platform to speak with other actual experts, uh, Dr. Nandini Sharma, Dr. Rakesh Piers, and Dr. Hemant. Uh, so it's a privilege uh, for me to uh, speak a little bit about what our experience in the field has been so probably to those of you who uh, do not know about do not know much about the tb muk panchayat initiative i think briefly i'll touch upon uh, what the actual initiative is and uh, then like i'll uh, share a few experiences on uh, how our organization being the collaborator with the district ntp mm -hmm. The, the activities which we are undertaking. So is my screen visible, Parth? Uh, yes, the slides, yeah. So uh, TB Muk Panchayat Initiative, as many of you will be aware of, it is a community engagement initiative uh, by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare's uh, National TB Elimination Program, uh, which is uh, uh, which is integrating uh, activities of uh, Panchayati Raj institutions and the National TB Elimination Program to achieve the goals of TB elimination. Uh, so it is built on the concept of healthy villages for healthy nation. Uh, so uh, the community engagement model involving uh, panchayats, gram panchayats, this has been piloted in uh, various uh, districts uh, of various states of the country, uh, but a nationwide launch uh, to officially introduce it into the program that happened uh, last World TB Day on 24th March 2023. Nationwide, uh, the program launched it as a campaign to involve Panchayati Raj institutions, the local self-governments into TB elimination efforts. So uh, as I told you, it's the it's based on the concept of uh, healthy villages. So essentially, NTP has uh, some roles and Panchayati Raj institutions have some roles. And NTP's role is essentially to ensure that uh, the Panchayat uh, panchayat development plans uh, include TB related uh, activities and uh, the information about TB elimination efforts are reaching to the lowest uh, of the uh, lowest rung in the uh, community and to the general public as well and uh, to of course build the capacity of 
panchayati raj members uh, and the community also uh, for achieving this particular uh, target of tb elimination so it is it is sort of vertical community engagement program you can say uh, uh, but but a lot of advocacy that is the mainstay of uh, this particular initiative and the panchayati raj institutions in turn have to ensure that they are uh, including tb related activities in their agenda budget for it and make sure that these things are sustainably implemented and regularly monitored so these are the uh, specific roles uh, defined for these particular departments and they have defined a set of indicators uh, to uh, operationalize it so these are the set of indicators which are defined as of now of course uh, in uh, during the introduction of the campaign the indicators were slightly different now it has been revised and this is the latest uh, indicators uh, which are which have been disseminated to the field and of this uh, if you can see the first two highlighted indicators the presumptive tb examination rate and tb case notification rate these are mandatory achievements for a panchayat to qualify as tb mukt uh, there should be mandatory achievement of these first two indicators in more than 80% of the villages under each gram panchayat whichever panchayat is taking the claim of tb mukt and in the rest of the indicators at least three of it should be achieved by more than 80% of the villages so these are the set of indicators and how is that process the process is that uh, once uh, they verify uh, these uh, uh, particular figures like it is happening over over the year, of course, uh, the Gram Panchayat will submit claim to the district TB officer through the block panchayat, and there will be verification of claims by the district TB team. Then finally, the TB Muk Panchayat declaration will happen. So, along with the certificates for TB Muk Panchayat, which is valid for one year uh, for these particular Gram Panchayats, which is issued by the district authorities on World TB Day, they, they also provide uh, uh, a statue of Mahatma Gandhi who envisage uh, the, uh, the healthy villages uh, concept. So to denote that, uh, they have this uh, provision of giving a bronze statue of Mahatma Gandhi for one year of TB Mukta uh, qualification. And if continuously for two years, the panchayats are getting uh, this particular uh, status it is a silver statue and for continuous three years it's gold statue so these are what the uh, what the program or the guidelines as per tb muk panchayat initiative uh, uh, describes like what the activities would be so i uh, work for a uh, rural uh, ngo research organization it's an ngo as well so uh, it, it is uh, called kem hospital research center it is uh, working in rural pune of maharashtra uh, so we are officially collaborating with the district uh, ntep to do a small part of this particular initiative because we have a strong presence in the community for the past uh, two decades so we have uh, um, we run something called as hdss health and demographic surveillance system uh, it is just a, a system which collects longitudinal data from a defined population over a long period of time so we have this hdss established for the past 21 years and we collect the births deaths uh, marriages in migration out migration all this data from the specific popula specified population from the fixed geographic area for the past 21 years uh, and every three four years we have full-fledged uh, census data collection like uh, we do a proper door-to-door -door, uh, survey do the head counting and uh, collect a lot more details like morbidity patterns uh, eligible women pregnant women all those sorts of detailed data so we have a rich data repository uh, and uh, due to this we have been working with that particular area there are, there are 22 villages in our uh, geography uh, area and it is spread across two talukas of Shirur and Haveli of Pune district and we cover a 1,75,000 population. So we have a, an ongoing relationship with the uh, panchayats and uh, all the local uh, people over there. All our research studies are built upon this. So banking on this, we uh, this, we 
became the collaborators uh, for sensitizing the community and the panchayat members as well for, as part of this particular initiative. And also to point out one important point is that all our field workers who go into the field belong to these 22 villages. They are sort of act as representatives of the community. They are hired from these villages only. So we already have a lot of ongoing TB related work. We run ICMR projects, uh, RBCG trial. Uh, there is a TB diabetes uh, a comorbidity uh, integration uh, uh, program. So there are multiple studies which we are already doing, collaborating with the district TB center and the state TB office. Uh, and uh, we do it uh, among this community. So we already have a little bit of background working in TB, uh, which is why we seriously uh, thought about uh, taking up this initiative. We are also Nikshay Mitra, uh, that is the uh, food uh, donor uh, scheme. Like uh, we are officially registered Nikshay Mitra to both uh, Ambegaon and Shirur Talukas of this particular area. So th these are the reasons why we thought we will uh, we will seriously venture into or do our part in helping the program in doing uh, this particular uh, sensitization part. Uh, so a lot uh, you can say harnessing local technical expertise was our thought behind venturing out into it so obviously we went on with a lot of planning meetings uh, there were a lot of uh, consultations happening between the uh, district and state and tp and uh, there were a lot of processes where we could uh, finally uh, contribute to we charted out all those things and finally uh, we launched uh, our uh, TB Muk Panchayat, uh, TB Muk Vadu HDSs. That was what we decided uh, collaboratively with all our sarpanches. Uh, we decided that we will uh, aim for a TB Muk Vadu HDSs. That is, these 22 villages we can uh, aim for a TB uh, Muk status. And it formally launched, coincidentally, it happened uh, on the same day, on 24th of March. Uh, so we, uh, the, the sarpanches and the NTP officials uh, inaugurated this campaign on uh, in our uh, campus and uh, uh, we had a, a very large turnout of people who um, who participated in this particular uh, event. There were TB patients and survivors with their families, local community members, all the healthcare delivery system staff, including NTP officials, the panchayat members. So everybody was present. We had discussions about the initiative, how big a problem TB is, what can we do towards it, what do we aim by TB Muktwadu HDS. So we had uh, a half a day program uh, uh, around this. And then, of course, the activity started. So as I told you, we, we had taken up only a small part of this uh, particular uh, initiative that is sensitizing the gram panchayats as well as uh, uh, giving uh, IEC to the public. These are the two major activities which we have taken up and which is ongoing. Right now, it is going on. So what happened uh, after this launch was that we had a guidebook preparation because the guidelines which were initiated, uh, which were released by CTD, it, uh, I mean, Th those are, of course, the reference ones, but uh, uh, we needed more of a simple, ready reckoner, uh, pictorial kind of uh, um, uh, book, which covered uh, not only about TB, but the various provisions which are available in the program. That is most important. The testing is free, treatment is free, and TB is such a big problem. Untreated TB, how, how much of a problem it is. These things had to be stressed. So we kind of uh, tailored a, a trainer's guidebook, a sort of ready reckoner uh, we trained a larger group of our field workers and uh, paramedical workers and uh, two rounds of training of trainers uh, we had uh, by KEM and also by the district TB center and from that we came up with four uh, master trainers who went and carried out uh, started carrying out the gram panchayat sensitizations of course we do uh, a pre-test and post-test with the uh, gram panchayat panchayat members. So we get an appointment from these particular panchayats, uh, ask them for some uh, 45 minutes to one hour time and uh, go to their uh, panchayat office the day when they are meeting. We speak about, uh, as I told you, focus has to be there on uh, like four symptoms of TB 
everybody knows uh, they are very uh, savvy with it but what uh, the, the fact that testing is free treatment is free and un uh, untreated tb can uh, lead to so much of complications and there is this ongoing initiative for tb muk panchayat and that the ntp will approach you all these things we talk in detail to them then we do a post test also and they sort of some of them ask us can you come and speak to us uh, to our community members when we have the gram sabha uh, can you speak to them so uh, so those sort of things happen then we have iec materials from the district tb office so we give it to them so that they can paste it in their offices so that sort of activities happen then of course iec to the public that is something which we have very seriously taken on so we conduct street plays rallies and when these rallies and all are happening we conduct it in junctions and also we give uh, flyers and posters to all the nearby shops uh, locals and we rope in the local school children uh, so so they are also very interested when school children come their teachers come parents come so so that sort of uh, uh, iec activities also uh, are ongoing so uh, this these particular two activities are what are ongoing right now so what is proposed is that we'll also help the panchayat members to uh, sort of uh, calculate these claims and uh, things like that but again that is that is not not yet started because we are still in the sensitization mode so this is uh this is a, a small uh brief about uh, what we are doing so um uh, my intention is like we, we we are really eager to know how can we take this forward sustainably and what more can be done than this only sensitization part what more can we contribute so hence this uh, forum i hope will be uh, helpful for that thank you uh, thank you, Swati, for that uh, informative presentation. Uh, overall, it seems like this uh, TB Muk Panchayat is heavily based around awareness and advocacy. Uh, with on paper, it also asks for uh, active case finding, reporting, and also making sure people are compliant with treatment. Uh, our next speaker, Dr. Rakesh, who is uh, who has graduated from Thiruvananthapuram Government Medical College, did his MD in Community Medicine from CMC Vellore, and is currently working as a senior technical advisor at the union. Uh, Thank you for joining us sir, today. And uh, the question that I want to pose to you is, uh, you know, on paper, this seems like a great initiative, but is there something that you feel that uh, is missing or something that can be incorporated to make this better? Uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, Dr. Hemant, Dr. Nandini, Swati, hi. Uh, so, really happy to be part of uh, this forum and uh, discussions. Uh, Swati has given a introduction. So what what is more uh, we need to understand is that local self government. See, it's it's actually based on 774 uh, amendment act in 1993. The powers have been so till that time there was only central government and state government. But there is one more tier of government that's called local self government. They have been empowered with lots of functions and powers. So they are a part of. So if you if you look at panchayat, municipality, or corporation, as per the Constitution of India, uh, they are the political institutions acting as the the cabinet of the village. They are the government for that particular village. So that is something which we need to uh, uh, understand. Uh, so this is basically a system of decentralized governance. This entire panchayat is basically a system of decentralized governance with so much objectives and all. And uh, one striking feature is that uh, in all these panchayat councils. Uh, one third of the seats are already reserved for women. So if you look at this entire panchayat uh, thing, one third of the seats will be uh, for women. And there are lots of initiatives, uh, even through Aishman Bharat or even through the NHM, to involve this panchayat, to involve the community. Say, for example, we know about structures like Jan Arugya Samiti or Village Health and Sanitation Nutrition Committee or Arugya Samitis. All these are actually part of, there are so many structures through which we try to engage uh, with the community, uh, with this and and try to leverage on these panchayat systems. I'll just briefly uh, touch upon for the next uh, six or seven minutes on a case study. So what I thought is I'll just present a case study. So to me, uh, TB free panchayat is means bringing people uh, at the at the center. So uh, this is what uh, what I do. So the case study is about a state called Kerala. Uh, why I present about Kerala is basically Kerala. These local self governments are so they have. They are a well advanced uh, state where they have already uh, done this democratic decentralization, democratic governance much earlier. 
and there is also financial power also 30 to 40 percentage of the state's budget is being spent through this local self-government and there are effective agencies for different sectors involved in other programs uh, there so in 2017 what government of kerala has launched is i'm talking about an old story basically it's a story of 2017 where they brought their guidance document uh, on kerala tv illumination mission I just want to look at the title of the document again, the guidance document for the people's movement against tuberculosis in Kerala. So this is called people's movement against tuberculosis and how they envisioned is uh, their, their tagline was my TB free panchayat municipality or corporation. This was the tagline of the Kerala TB elimination mission strategy document that was released in 2017. Uh, and uh, they clearly demarcated various responsibilities. District will do this block will do this and village need to do so many other activities uh, under the leadership of the panchayat right so it was a collaborative joint activity the entire kerala tb elimination mission is a collaborative activity by the health department as well as the ministry of uh, as well as the department of the panchayat uh, 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 it's called local self government department there and they had clear cut demarcations of what need to be done at the village level basically so they formed a uh, panchayat tb elimination task forces in all panchayats in all the panchayats they formed task forces for TB elimination, right? So the chairperson will be the sarpanch or the head of the panchayat is an elected person. There will be members from civil society, including women self-help groups. There will be health officials. Uh, there will be TB survivors. All these people will be part of this group. And what this group do, does is they actually uh, plan. So they actually monitor, they actually implement the entire TB elimination for that particular village or that particular panchayat. This is what they have been empowered enough to do. Uh, I'll just, I mean, we don't have much time to say, but quickly what they are actually doing is, uh, their initial task is a decentralized TB surveillance for the local actions. So what they do is they collect the data, uh, how many people were tested, how many people were uh, TB uh, are there. They looked at the data uh, ward-wise or panchayat-wise or village-wise. Who is looking at this data? This data is being looked by the panchayat or the uh, local self-government task force for TB elimination. And they look at how good is our presumptive TB examination. Obviously, yes, technical support is provided by the local primary health center, primary health center uh, or, or the health and wellness center, whatever it is. Uh, how are we performing well? They discuss how bad is our loss to follow up rate, how bad is our death rate, what shall we do to address these problems? This is decentralized TB surveillance for local actions. And based on uh, these insights, they decide, okay, what needs to be done further? Uh, do we need to have additional laboratory here? Why people are not getting tested in this particular panchayat? Uh, is it because of the lack of lab technician? Is it because of the lack of the microscopy center? Or is it because of the lack of specimen collection transportation system? Uh, based on this panchayat's decentralized surveillance, the state has started 127 new uh, laboratories uh, in 2017 and 2019. I'm just saying the panchayat advocated that we need uh, a, a laboratory in our panchayat or we need a specimen collection transportation in our panchayat. They have their development funds also. They have their panchayat development funds. They can say, okay, we will provide the lab technician. Many panchayats, they provide the lab technician. I'm saying uh, they went to that extent. This is what I am trying to say. You asked me what more can be done. That's why I'm presenting this story. Uh, what they have done is they also have done uh, map the vulnerability of the entire people in the panchayat, this task force with the help of the primary health care team. And they were regularly conducting the active case finding. Obviously, this is being uh, led by the primary health care team, but uh, under the ownership of the panchayat. So what happens when panchayat is leading the initiative is basically it will get wider acceptance, it will get wider coverage, it will get uh, it will it will ensure that uh, everybody is included. It will be inclusive. Uh, they can easily mobilize uh, the volunteers. For example, seventy-eight thousand volunteers were mobilized in the state through this panchayat initiative uh, at that point of time. Who went and did the vulnerability survey? Uh, at that point of time. So they are regularly uh, repeated active case finding initiatives are actually going on. And this village task force, they regularly monitor uh, how the activities are going on. In some of the places, the panchayat leaders themselves will go. This actually improve the, because they are, they are the leaders, they are the elected representatives, they are the cabinet of that particular village. So they themselves will go to improve the coverage, uh, to understand the scenarios, all these things will happen there. The other important structure that actually came up in 2012 in the state, but that has been uh, scaled up massively in 2017 was the treatment support group. So in every panchayat, they actually uh, constitute a treatment support group. Uh, it's a non-statutory body of socially responsible citizens to provide social support to each uh, people based on the need. The need will be identified by the, uh, the 
the treatment supporter uh, or the or the concerned uh, uh, primary health care team but uh, the the treatment support group will ensure that they are being supported so the members are usually panchayat will be there obviously there will be merchant association leaders there will be philanthropists there will be priests there will be auto rickshaw drivers union all the philanthropists in that particular village will be the members of that so they particularly help these people to financially support they provide food and nutrition based on the requirement they provide transportation to health facility for example auto rickshaw driver say i will take uh, this person to get his daily injections in the health facility uh, they provide emotional support uh, if requires a counseling the priest will say okay i will go and talk to them if they require de addiction support uh, then somebody else everything cannot be handled by the health department alone they cannot support all the people together so it's not only nutrition but lots of arrays of things uh, motivation for de addiction bringing the spouse back uh, ensure linkage to all welfare schemes. There are so many welfare schemes run by this panchayat, including, say, MNREGA or the housing schemes or the smokeless chola schemes. So many welfare schemes are being run by uh, this panchayat, basically. It's being run through the panchayat. All the central government welfare schemes are run through the panchayat. They can prioritize people with TB for all this sort of stuff. I know that I'm, uh, my time is limited, so I'm just rushing through. So they will uh, ensure delivery of services even at the doorsteps. Uh, for prevention, uh, they have airborne infection control at the household level where they provide a household airborne infection control kit. At the school level, they organize handkerchief revolution. They call it as handkerchief revolution in 2017. I mean, I'm talking about a story of 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Uh, but during that time, uh, every schools they went and taught the cafe to create. It's called handkerchief revolution. Uh, this sort of stuff. In the health facilities also, they ensure that, okay, fine. Uh, we need something like uh, airborne infection control in the health facilities. And 60 local self-government have done infrastructure modification of the health facilities uh, for uh, strengthening the infection control practices. This is something. So they are the owners of primary health institutions in that particular area. Through their project development plan, they say that, okay, we will provide a mask vending machine to this particular health facility. Or we will we can uh, do establish this facility or whatever is required for the people of that panchayat they can do they have that power they are the government of that particular panchayat that's what i'm trying to say uh important thing is about the vulnerability reduction so how they do this vulnerability reduction is they try to reduce the individuals and society's vulnerability to develop tb this is an important thing because entire panchayat's objective is poverty alleviation uh its entire objective is development so Obviously, we know that vulnerabilities for TB are also undernutrition, uh, poverty alleviation, uh, better housing, SWAS, all these sort of stuff are being effectively implemented through this panchayat system. So they integrate all these vulnerable reduction activities. Uh, whatever they do, whatever the panchayat do will ultimately uh, help in reducing TB in that particular area. Uh, this is small panchayat, say, two free panchayat. Many of panchayats came forward and said that we made this panchayat to buy for free. Uh, they may have CR clinics, all the support. Uh, they provide nutritional support through these village task forces and deliver it at the doorsteps of the people. Uh, not even TB, I'm saying undernourished. So we need to, if we really need to, if you're addressing, if you're providing nutritional kit to a TB patient, we're addressing a comorbidity. But if you're providing a nutritional kit to an undernourished, we're addressing a vulnerability there. That's a prevention uh, thing that we are actually engaging. So all this sort of stuff they do. If you look at the Sapka Saath, Sapka Vikas agenda also, these are the nine themes where uh, the panchayats will be investing in. Poverty-free, healthy village, child-friendly village, clean green village, village with good wealth. All these can help in TB. That's what I'm trying to say. All these initiatives can ultimately help in TB. There is a single overhead objective where all members in the panchayat under the leadership of the Sarpanch will come and say, my TB-free panchayat. This is what they all try to do. My It's my responsibility to make my panchayat TB-free. Uh, so... Uh, when these processes were there, there were some awards basically tried for giving uh, so many panchayats where uh, T0 TV among under five children. But these awards or recognitions are uh, just to motivate the panchayats and has nothing to do with the things. What is more important is the process of doing all these things rather than certification. This is what my point is all about. Uh, obviously, as there is a decline of the estimated incident TB burden in the entire state, there are lots of other indicators. Their loss to follow up rates came down from 4% to 1%. So lots of things that happened with related to that. It has been scientifically uh, documented also. Uh, but basically, to summarize, uh, panchayats can help in bringing out local solutions. One size should doesn't fit all. They can plan their strategy. They can improve access. They'll ensure social inclusions. They foster the community ownerships. They ensure convergence because panchayat president can uh, converge all the activities happening in that panchayat. 
agriculture department is there, veterinary department is there, education is there, everything comes under the panchayat basically, right? Health is there. So they can converge all this sort of stuff. There is a multi-sectoral accountability. They can address social determinants of TB. They can address indoor air pollution. They can provide smokeless chulas. So many things they can do. This has been systematically documented in this uh, journal article, uh, Local Self-Government Stewardship for TB Elimination in Kerala, India. This is published in the Public Health Action Journal. So ultimately, uh, for me, uh, TB free panchayat means Jan Andolan or the people's movement against tuberculosis. And how it happens is it's just a 30 seconds video. If I am, I, I'm sorry, uh, I have taken a one minute extra, but uh, this is something which I wanted to show you. Uh, there is no sound in that, but this is how I envision. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Sir, the video is not visible. I think if visible, you... not visible. Yeah, stop uh, and then reshare your screen. Then I think it will Okay, 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 okay. Uh, if it is not happening, then that's fine, but I will just try it again. Uh... Now you are seeing my screen. Okay. Uh, what are we seeing now? Uh, we are seeing the slide only, sir. Slide only, okay. Sorry for this confusion. Uh, I should not have tried doing this. No let problem. us try it as a last step again. Uh, Dr. Rakesh, try sharing your whole screen, not a specific. Yeah, yeah I'm trying that. Perfect. Are you seeing? Ah, now we can see the video. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, how the Jan Andolan will happen is, say, for example, the Panchayat president, uh, the entire people in the Panchayat will be sitting there. Okay, so then somebody will come and say, we will go to house to house and do the case finding. Somebody will, the auto rickshaw drivers, they will come and say, fine, we will try to support uh, the treatment support to the people who are diagnosed with TB. Uh, somebody will come and say that Panchayat, I shall organize the handkerchief revolution. Uh, somebody will say, okay, we will set up the cuff corner to the development fund. The Panchayat will say, uh, the youth in that village will say, okay, we can transport the sputum samples. I mean, you may think that it's an idealistic or utopian condition, but somebody will say, like, I shall provide money to any TB patients who is in need. Uh, somebody will come and say, I will work on reducing tobacco in this particular panchayat. And school teacher will come and say, fine, I will go and educate everybody on TB preventive therapy, some others. And ultimately, the Krama Panchayat will serpent under the leadership. He is the people representative. He will say, my TB free panchayat. Uh, we may feel that it is an utopian idea, but what I feel is this is something what is actually meant by the people's movement against tuberculosis. But this is the actual social mobilization that needs to happen. Uh, it's not about bringing people for rally. This is the actual social mobilization that needs to happen. If you thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful presentation. I think the key message which came out was uh, decentralization of healthcare where uh, you give uh, power of uh, keeping people healthy to the people and the uh, people around them. And uh, I think just to summarize, uh, the, the important points that you mentioned were leaders to take more responsibility in the panchayat and uh, lead from the front uh, and treatment support groups, like you mentioned, uh, which play a big role and also provide preventive and supportive uh, care uh, to the patients who are suffering from tuberculosis. Uh, thank you once again, sir, for, for that uh, extremely wonderful presentation. Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Hemant. Uh, Hemant works as a senior medical scientist uh, at Division of Health System Research at ICMR National Institute of Epidemiology. Uh, he has completed his community medicine MD from PGI Chandigarh and also has a PhD from Radboud, uh, Radboud University in Netherlands. Currently, he is co-leading a statewide differentiated TB care model in Tamil Nadu, uh, and which is aimed at reducing TB deaths. And he's also leading a USA JSI supported national level Evaluation of active case finding for TB in marginalized and vulnerable populations in India. Uh, thank you, Dr. Heman, for joining us today. Uh, you know, research plays a whole very important part in whatever we do. And you being an operational and uh, operational research expert, what role do you think research could play in this whole initiative, which has just started this year? And how do we incorporate research institutions like the one that Swati is coming from? What role do they play and what role does research play in this initiative? Over to you. Thank you, Parks. Thank you to my colleagues who spoke before me who made my job easier. 
So my session is less on presentations, more on direct speaking with the audience. And I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, but before I begin, uh, many of them who have joined here are from a diverse background, I believe. So let me just take two slides and to explain what actually operational research is and how operational research can help in improving implementation of health programs. So I'm sharing my screen. So I'm only going to, before I get into the topic, I'm only going to cover two points about OR. What is operational research? And what are the three guiding principles to set up OR agenda or operational research agenda? Or in other words, how to identify your priority research questions? If you, unless we ha uh, have these priority research questions, we cannot proceed with operational research. So what operational research is, uh, this is one definition which I like and I follow. It's any research producing practical usable knowledge that can improve program implementation irrespective of the type of research. In other words, any research conducted in routine program settings with the aim to improve your program outcomes is operational research, right? I'm not going to get into OR, IR, HSR, but this is the broad definition. So the key thing is context, okay? So this is the definition and based on this, I'm going to continue my discussion. But before we do OR, we need to understand what are our priority research questions. Now this is applicable to operational research. This could also be applicable to clinical research, you know? You need to have your research questions first. In operational research, you know, I uh, this uh, slide is being taken from my sorted uh, you know, lectures. These are the three guiding principles which, you know, all of us should remember uh, when we set, you know, uh, OR agenda. First is to define the program or health systems objectives. So in this case, it is uh, TB Mukt Gram Panchayat Initiative, correct? So define the program or health systems objectives and understand what activities are being implemented to achieve those objectives. So that is the first step. Second is we need to identify the constraints in meeting those objectives or constraints in implementing the activities in order to meet those objectives. So again, I'm continuing from the previous uh, uh, guiding principle that first we identify the objectives and what activities are being implemented to meet those objectives, identify constraints around meeting those objectives or in implementing those activity and ask research questions around those constraints. It's as simple as possible. Now coming to our uh, TB Mukta Gram Panchayat initiative, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Now coming to the TB Mukta Gram Panchayat uh, initiative, if you look at the objectives, and you know, I'm just going through the program document, uh, the objective states that, you know, before the objective, there's a background that a lot of efforts are happening where health functionaries at village level, at health sub-center level, at gram panchayat level, are putting in efforts to, to you know, uh, uh, reach our NTP targets. And there is a need to measure these efforts and, you know, also validate them in an endeavor to provide certification and to declare, uh, you know, uh, panchayats as TB Mukt. And the, with this background, the objective stated is, number one, to empower uh, the gram panchayats to realize the so that they realize uh, you know what's the magnitude of problem that we are dealing with and to take action to solve that problem and as a result create unhealthy competitions between gram panchayats right now what are the activities being implemented to me uh, those who now uh, who come from research background you'll agree that these are broad objectives. Uh, these are not, you know, uh, smart objectives, as we call specific, measurable, right? But whatever, we have to go by what program document provides. Pardon me if there is an, uh, you know, revised document which is circulating internally because, you know, I don't have access to that. Now, we have understood what is the objective. One is to empower them to understand, realize what is the magnitude of TB and to, you know, empower them to address the problem. And number two, as a result of this, you know, to create some healthy competition by, you know, okay, my panchayat is TB Mukti, is yours, my panchayat has got, you know, gold, 
I strongly believe, uh, so there are two principles in management. One is you punish those who don't work. And one is whom to motivate those who work. I'm from that school of thought, you need to motivate those who work because those who are working are pulling your system. Uh, those who are not working, and you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not speaking negatively, but because everyone has their own reasons. Those who are not working or systems that are not working will anyway not work because they're clever people, whatever mechanisms you put in. It is those people who genuinely work because of a lack of constructive feedback or a positive feedback stop working, you know, or a lack of an enabling environment, lack of appropriate feedback. They don't see where am I fitting in the bigger picture. And then, you know, everyone is not, we, are, we don't live in an idealistic world. So therefore, this is good that, you know, you're generating a healthy competition among, you know, panchayats. Now, the activities to meet those objectives is number one, uh, meetings, so that, you know, the block level and gram panchayat level know what is to be done. Uh, you know, what are the, uh, cap basically calling capacity beliefs that they know what all they're supposed to do. Then preparations, uh, Swati clearly mentioned, you know, a TB Mukta activity is to be included in your panchayat development plans, create awareness, uh, maybe, you know, support in nutritional supplementation, uh, maybe every quarterly, every six monthly, the VHSNC should sit and see what is our panchayat status. And then based on this map resources to ensure that we uh, fulfill the state, uh, you know, uh, the indicator so that we become TB Mukta. Then based on that, they will uh, make a claim, then there'll be a verification of claim, and then there'll be declaration, certification, and eventually, you know, certification and a statute. Now, the point here is, you know, the objectives currently are not tangible. So uh, anyone who wants to do OR in this area, please contact uh, those in the state, those in the CTD, to understand more from them as to do you have any tangible objectives? Now, tangible objectives could be that on an average, I'm just hypothesizing, okay? I want, We want at least over a period of one year, at least so many percentage of gram panchayats to make a claim. So your objectives could be around your processes, your objectives could be around your outputs, impact or, or outcome. And let's forget impact for now. So many objectives could be set around processes, right? Now, when we have those process uh, objectives clearly identified that we would like at least, you know, so many percentage of gram panchayats to make a claim, you know, forget, you know, and then we want so many percentage of those to be met or overall so many percentage of gram panchayats to be TB MOOC based on our criteria by this date. If I agree, you know, uh, we are looking at a more conservative objective, you know, to encourage them. But for operational researchers, if there's a tangible objective, then we can see whether the objective has been met. And then we can, why the objective has not been met, what are the constraints? The activities are clearly mentioned. Excellent, you know, excellent. The document is really great. So we can always see whether there are any barriers in implementing those activities and therefore do OR around it. So this is one thing which, you know, uh, I, uh, and let me uh, be the first to admit that I've not had too much, too much discussions uh, with those involved in the program, but it would be nice to have more tangible, uh, you know, objectives. This is number one. Number two is that now I'm going to stop my discussion on OR because this is the max I had to say. One point related to research or, you know, having people from research organizations being part of this is in the verification process, I see that at district level, the IAPSM representatives or community medicine departments of medical colleges are to be involved. So this is excellent. And this was also part done during the subnational certification. So this is excellent. This will bring in some rigor. This will, someone will surely do OR and they'll keep pinching those in the program. You, know, you need to do this right, that right. Okay. So that's one excellent point. Now that's all. I'm not going to speak beyond this on OR because unless we have the specific objective, you know, it becomes difficult. But Let's continue the communication with the program and try to understand from their perspective, do you have any tangible objectives so that we can then uh, uh, determine why we are meeting them, enablers of meeting, we are not meeting those objective barriers and do over around this. Coming to broader points, you know, I would have genuinely liked, I would have liked VHSNCs to be given the primary responsibility of this. I am a boring person. I keep talking about basics, basics, basics. It's v, it is the VHSNCs or VHNSCs, however you want to call them, Village Health Nutrition Sanitation Committees, who are expected to monitor the health services provided to them at the village level. So I strongly believe 
this should also be a sub component of that i totally understand in the document that vhsncs have been you know they'll be supporting the gram panchayat but i would have loved it i would have loved if, if VH, vhsncs were the flag bearers of this initiative and i will you know because as a result of this talk i did a bit of research so if i did not talk so i will you know i don't like making comments before talking to program managers i'm first time doing this but i'll surely write to those whom i know in the program that can we do this but then the question would be vhsncs are defunct you know so what if you want something to be you know uh, sustainable you have to use the existing mechanisms you know, uh, Gram Panchayat eventually the VHSNC submits their, it's a subcommittee of the Gram Panchayat. VHSNC submits their report to the Gram Panchayat every year as to what work they are doing. So I would have been really happier if those who are in this uh, uh, call, someone who has, you know, who are in program implementation policy making, see if VHSNCs could be made central to this uh, because that is in line with, you know, how under NHM, the various health services under the various national health programs have to be uh, monitored. Uh, one excellent thing that which I like here is, you know, uh, uh, you know, competition. And if we can have a cohort-wise tracking, uh, and uh, again, this is coming from a research angle, gram panchayats that do well, do they continue to do well? Gram panchayats that do not do well, what happens to them after three years? Because there is something called as theory of diff you know, diffusion of innovation, you know? From early adapters to late ad adapters to fence sitters to late uh, to so many things. So there are different kinds of. It will be interesting to know to have a cohort, state-wise, district-wise cohort of gram panchayats and see you know how they are performing. So this is someone who are doing OR. Uh, I think this would be a really interesting thing to have cohorts uh, of not. Uh, why should we have only cohorts of individuals? We can have cohorts of uh, gram panchayats and track their annual progress and you know then. Research questions will automatically, you know, come. Uh, some more points are that we should make sure, like any other initiative, that the load doesn't fall on the STS. I observed one comment being made, and I totally agree. Whoever that person is, high five to you. Uh, one good point here is combining presumptive sputum examination rate and TB notification as an indicator, mandatory indicator, that if 80% of the villages achieve more than 50 presumptive, more than 50 presumptive sputum examinations per thousand population in a year, along with less than one per uh, thousand notifications, which is good. So case notification, uh, so presumptive TB is, uh, presumptive TB are also getting examined, high numbers, but still notifications is low, which is good. They didn't stick only to notification. You know, when you stick only to notification, what happens? Na rahega baas, na bajegi basuri. Please give me a Tamil Marathi corollary for this. Don't report, we are TB free, right? So this is very good that combining presumptive sputum examination rate, a high rate, along with a low, uh, uh, you know, TB notification is good, very good. Uh, previously, it was less than two per thousand. I'm happy it has become less than one per thousand because less than two per thousand when the document was prepared, Two per thousand translates to two hundred per lakh population, which is the you know annual number of instant TB cases we have. So if they have reduced it to less, it's not fair, no. Like if I'm one ninety nine per lakh and you say I'm TB mukt, right? So it's good they have done uh, less than one, which is basically less than hundred per lakh population, which is good. Uh, I have one more point because I've observed a lot of SNC and its results. Uh, while SNC is good. But SNC takes two to three months. I, I don't know. I might be wrong, but this is my observation. SNC takes good two months of a district NTP staff or DTO's time to do. Always these things come with opportunity costs, right? So please keep in mind the opportunity cost. But the good point again is that the document is very simple. It is not too complicated, which even a gram panchayat level people can understand. But always program should keep in mind the opportunity cost because by January, a claim should be made by, you know, uh, March at district level, you know, a verification, everything should be done. So those OR people sitting here see as a result of SNC and other thing, whether other program performances are falling down or not falling down. That could be something interesting. Then again, TB MOOC, the word TB MOOC, you know, <laughs> uh, some people say that when you say TB MOOC, it motivates people, but does it cause laxity? 
like I achieve the TB MOOCs targets, which is more than 50 TB notification, uh, more than 50 presumptive TB examined in my Gram Panchayat per thousand population and less than one notification per thousand population by Gram Panchayat in last year. Uh, will it cause some laxity? Okay, I've achieved. I'm mukt ho gaya. Hamara gram TB se mukt ho gaya. This is where sociologists could come in that whether we should use the word TB. I know it's great to motivate, but with it, will it have any side effects? Because in many districts which are, get bronze medal in SNC, they start jumping. Or we have achieved bronze, we have eliminated TB, done it. And then they use the word eliminate. You know, even if you get bronze medal, you move closer to meeting the NTB target, not even eliminate. So these are the things you know around uh, this. Let me just look at my notes. Final point, again, not linked to OR. I am pretty confident that if this is done well, this will increase the presumptive sputum examination rate. And this is one thing which we want. The reason being our program starts reporting from presumptive sputum examination. There's a lot of pre-testing losses which happen. We don't have presumptive TB registers which will then, when you compare presumptive TB register and lab register, you'll find the gap between uh, actual presumptive TB that came to the system and actual that got examined. Uh, so, and our national TB prevalence survey uh, report says that, you know, a large number of eligible don't get the appropriate care. If I go with two-week cough to a health system, around 40 to 50% don't get the appropriate diagnostics. So I'm quite hopeful that this initiative will increase the presumptive sputum examination rate. And once this is done, uh, it will be really helpful. Uh, and again, I'm nowadays pushing for this concept of presumptive sputum register. Can these kind of initiatives, can we have a presumptive TB register at VHSNC level, head sub center level, PHC level, including medical college? Let us not assume all presumptive TB get tested. Thank you. I'll end here. Apologies if I cross my time. Over to you, Parth. Yeah. Uh, and I realized today's Nivar, Niv, Nivarna, till now I thought it was Nirvana. Yeah. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing those uh, really insightful points. Overall, like you described, it looks quite well written on paper. And uh, I think the only drawback which comes out very clearly is uh, the objectives are too broad for uh, any sort of OR at present by just looking at the document. But with further discussion with the local people, I think OR, crisp OR objectives can come out. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Nandini Sharma, ma'am. Uh, Nandini, ma'am, is Director Professor in the Department of Community Medicine at MAMSI. She is the ex-dean and ex-HOD of the department at Mohan Azad. And uh, she has been my teacher, my guide, and I'm so, so fortunate to have her as my teacher and even in the discussion here today. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for joining. You have been involved, you have been involved in state, national level you know, decision-making in when it comes to tuberculosis in India. Based on your experience, what do you think? How sustainable is this going to be? And Rakesh sir mentioned that Kerala has been doing it for a while, but we know Kerala is very different. Uh, we, India as a whole is quite different from Kerala. So, in considering other parts of the country, how sustainable is this intervention going to be? Over to you. Okay. So good evening, everyone, and uh, I'm glad I heard all the speakers uh, so much about OR and so much about the strategies for Kerala. Uh, it's impressive, definitely. So, so far as sustainability is concerned, look, I don't have a PPT prepared for it because I wasn't very sure about the question that would be asked. So, uh, regarding the sustainability, uh, see, when there is political will, which is there, after all, this was launched, this community engagement uh, initiative on such a large scale has been launched by none other than the Prime Minister himself. So, the political will is there. And uh, so far as the Panchayati Raj institutions are concerned, I think Dr. Rakesh did mention that uh, the 73rd Amendment has given them power. And so far as health is concerned, now Panchayat development plans include health now. And in health, TB is included. So basically, it is very good part about this initiative. What I found its strength was that uh, the Panchayati Raj institution and the TB program uh, people, which is the STO, DTO, they're all coming together because otherwise it has never been this kind of a cohesion like in delhi we don't have any panchayats and whatever we've been doing in delhi regarding this tv uh, panchayat it's been uh, very very um you know kind of a thing which we just did in five villages because there are hardly any villages in delhi so uh this coming together and this working together of the panchayati raj institution and the people actually involved in 
policy making as well as provision of TB treatment and diagnostic services would probably make it a sustainable thing as long as people's involvement is very good because people in India have never demanded health. We've all demanded free electricity, free water, free everything. But so far as health is concerned, for some odd reason, Indians don't demand health. So for that demand to be generated and you know, national prevalence survey that you were talking about, Dr. Ayman, the most surprising finding in, I don't know if you were there in the meeting in Chennai, the most surprising finding was that 64% people were found to be unaware. Now, unaware doesn't mean that they were not aware of the symptoms. Everybody knows the symptoms of TB. Years ago, when we did the studies in 98, 99 also, people were aware of the symptoms. Probably what it means is that they are not taking any action. You know, so no action means our services are possibly not geared towards people in need. So what happens when, you know, any of us get a cuff or whatever, and we do know, suspect that this is tuberculosis, what is the first reaction? This denial. And if the service is not very friendly, not very accessible and not readily available, it is not uh, going to be, you know, the person is not going to be uh, going there. So the first port of call would be some local practitioner, which is why we get all these statistics. All our studies show 70% go to a private practitioner first, may not even be a qualified private practitioner. And so this is where the Panchayati Raj institution and the state TB and uh, national TB services can actually make a difference. Because it is generating awareness, Swati, you just uh, presented first, and uh, I think Parth, you made the comment that it is generally about aware generating awareness, yes. But awareness without any backup service is useless. As we all know, if you're just going and giving some health education to people, and if they say, okay, I have this problem, now what do I do? And you say, I can't do anything, who's going to listen to you? So this backup service of diagnostic services and treatment has to be a very important mandate of this PRI. And since we have this Panchayat Development Plan and we have this Village Health Nutrition Society that you also said, and I read the document which uh, the Center TB Division has prepared, they have involved this PHNNC, though they have only mentioned that the 10,000 that they have is untied fund, they could use it for TB uh, people also, you know, providing fund, providing food, maybe providing nutrition, for which we do have the Niksha Mitra now. So basically, uh, we've had problems with procurement of drugs. So if you, okay, diagnose more cases, most examples of this kind of, uh, uh, this uh, in involvement of the panchayats, they've come, I read one from uh, Bhojpur district of Bihar, where they said that they increased the case finding by more than 30%. But unless you can actually handle these cases, it's probably going to be a negative effect. So, uh, some kind of, I don't know, it's not defined very well as to what is going to be the role of these Panchayati Raj institutions, which are elected bodies. So you see, that is where the, um, they could have a say in, uh, let's say like we could not procure drugs. Anybody who's procured anything in the government knows how difficult it is to do so. And so earlier drugs were centrally procured and everything was supplied, but it is not done, uh, at least in many states it's not being done. So there the problem arises. So unless the backup plan is there, that if, if the diagnostic services are needed, now CBNAT is not available. So if we are talking about, you know, drug sensitivity testing at the outset, and we are unable to do it, we are creating, uh, we are just not treating those people who have drug resistance TBA. We are waiting for that, you know, for some time to do that. So that awareness generation or utilization of funds is not going to help. So the public health architecture has to keep pace. So that is probably where this definition has to be very clear, which I could not find in the document, but it's a very sketchy document. Maybe they're going to come out with a detailed document on the operationalization. Because what I could see of operationalization is that, okay, training of trainers has been done, which is the standard in any national health program since the time I joined, you know, 30 years ago or so. This is what we've been always been doing. We have a training of trainers and the cognitive domain changes. And then the training of trainers goes on to the next level of trainers, the next level of trainers, then, you know, it all goes without any kind of a, uh, evaluation, which actually shows what change has happened. So uh, you're talking about OR. For the trainings also, we've done a lot of OR in Delhi. And uh, we did find that most of these trainings did not have that kind of. So if you are just training the Panchayati Raj institution members, and uh, we really do not know because they are being trained to remove stigmatization to have help in case finding, but that power to actually have a 
good public health architecture to support whatever you're saying is possibly the most important thing that needs to be done. So that is uh, my view about, uh, you know, what is currently happening. And uh, this Panchayati um, Raj institution in Kerala, which is doing, I mean, the kind of service it is doing. Um, I don't know if there are many examples from the country. So sustainability from the political will, yes. From the Panchayati Raj institution's power, not very sure. From the people's involvement, people should basically community engagement means empowering them and you know letting them take their own decisions and also demanding things so how much that has happened that i think would need to to tell us in which state how much has changed because mostly what happens is okay you do a lot of case finding but after that also the presumptive register not just the presumptive register most of the case finding uh, also follows no treatment and you know cases lost lost for treatment uh, at, at this level with the current documentation whatever we have available so any specific questions about the sustainability i think you could ask um of course the uh, funding and all that we cannot discuss right now because you know what kind of thing is going to go in right now because of this uh, and another very important point the medical college involvement you know, in Delhi also, we've got awards twice for doing operation research, the best in the North Zone. So medical colleges are the ones, because in all these villages, we have about 650 medical colleges now. And there's a strong component of medical college involvement in the TB program. So all these villages could be, you know, some villages would be part of the rural field practice area. And there was once a move when we said that, okay, let's make TB free rural community uh, field practice area, urban field practice area. It didn't take off much, but now I guess it's the time to actually integrate this medical college with the Panchayati Raj institution and see if there is a medical college around or one medical college could adopt, you know, many panchayats. That also is possible. So apart from the monitoring, the actual uh, backup services, medical services would also be available. And TB is not just TB. There's so many other, you know, people have pointed out, speakers before me have pointed out so many things which go together. So that is uh, basically, um, I think that that component of medical college involvement needs to be spelled out more clearly. You said rightly, Dr. Hemant, in the SNC medical colleges, community medicine departments were involved in evaluation. Again, in this document also, it says evaluation. But so far as actual implementation as being a part of the, you know, overseeing or whatever, in, uh, that is not specified anywhere. And there's a wealth of, uh, you know, talent in the medical colleges as we're seeing this youngsters here speaking on from the community medicine department so that is something which is uh, not been done and again there is an example from up you know talking about kerala of course you do have the best kind of public health systems but in up also if i remember rightly in the second wave when the entire country was so devastated uh, we did have the up rural areas which were not affected in the first wave in the second wave they did manage through the panchayats so they had something like Mira, Gaon, Corona, something. And they did say that the uh, the rate over there was infection rate was less than 0.01%. So that kind of a demonstration did happen then. So in any infectious disease, if you can do it, that's fine. So if we just take a shot, this thing, you know, this is the, these are the strengths, basically the strengths. If we just take the weaknesses, you know, there are some weaknesses also in the system. And uh, the first weakness would be, um, as I just said about the public health architecture, that is something which we cannot really alter. But the opportunities are there, you know, lots of opportunities are there. So people, as I said, don't demand health. But once they know that if I'm diagnosed with a particular disease and if I do not, or if I do not have diagnostic facilities, I have the you know, power to maybe get it. So they may start demanding health for. And so all other disease profiles may also change. If the Panchayati Raj institutions can be strengthened so much that all communicable and non-communicable diseases could come under you know one umbrella and uh, basically uh, the improvement of ancillary programs which are going along you know the direct benefit transfer there's been a lot of problem with that initially now hopefully so people from the community like uh, that video that dr rakesh showed somebody from the community probably in delhi also we needed who would come and do something about dbt because dto's are spending all their time in dispersing the funds and then also you know people are complaining i'm not getting because whenever there's a money involved People are very, very demanding. 
So the uh, threat, you know, is one thing I would like to speak about because in essence, you also we've seen after all, Panchayati Raj institutions are also political bodies. And once you have this healthy competition, it's generally not very healthy always. Because over there also we saw a difference between states ruled by some ruling party and another ruling party. And suddenly, you know, somebody went, uh, was in for election and there was a medal coming from somewhere and we were very sure it was possibly not meant to be. So that kind of a thing would happen. So these awards and all, I'm really not much in favor of. Because even the baselines, you know, you're not very clear about the baseline. And you don't know the situation in each place is different. So we should see the effort made. Like Delhi, we could never ever apply for any of this SNC because we have such a huge number of people who come, get treated here and disappear. You know, they don't even get the full treatment. They come here for diagnosis, give some address and disappear. And there's nothing we can do about it. Being the capital, we have no, you know, way we can refuse anybody. So these are, but the effort that was made in Delhi was huge. So th these awards and all, maybe I, uh, as you said, you know, about bronze medal somebody got and they, because this question I asked in Chennai, that after the bronze medal, what is the status? They could not answer. Because after that, they just stopped checking the status. So this somehow, like you come first in an exam and after that you stop studying. So that is not right, possibly, about the award thing. So that is the only threat which I foresee. So otherwise, all in all, the strengths are so many. And uh, OR, as you've just said, Dr. Heyman, if it can be formulated, um, you know, specific questions, specific ways in which we solve them. I think, and if Kerala became, becomes the, you know, example to follow, that would possibly be better than any awards. You know, you could just keep comparing, okay, this Panchayat is doing so well, you can also do it. So that's, that's basically all I can say about the sustainability on a long term. Anything else, if you want to ask based on this, go ahead. Thank you, ma'am, for uh... Uh, giving that analysis of this whole program and commenting on the sustainability. One thing which clearly comes out is it is sustainable if certain things are done, which is one is people are made to demand for him. Secondly, public health capacity and infrastructure is uh, also worked on and invested in, along with incorporating medical colleges. Uh, thanks a lot, ma'am. Uh, once again, uh, I we have, I think we can take out 10 minutes for questions from the audience. If anybody wants to ask something specifically, they can raise their hand. Uh, till then, I have one question to ask. Uh, this is a more of a panchayat initiative, but we already know that the highest burden of TB is in cities like Delhi and Mumbai. Uh, so, in under this initiative, how are we tackling that burden? Uh, if anybody wants to take that up. Um, Delhi has included some wards, municipal wards and all, but I am not aware of Mumbai. Probably they would have done something similar. But the central thing has not been rolled out everywhere. So Delhi was doing it on its own, you know, just like Rajasthan was. So uh, the central plan, I, I don't think I've seen anything regarding the urban areas. Dr. Rakesh, you were saying something. No, no, I was just trying to say, you see, uh, ending TB need to be made everybody's business and it will not happen. Uh, if everybody is not involved. Uh, when I talk about local self-government, I mean panchayat, municipality, corporations, everywhere. So they all need to work together uh, to end TB. Not only TB, but they, they have a big role to play. They need to realize that if there are awards or no awards, it doesn't matter, but they need to come and do it for welfare because ultimately their objective is to improve the welfare of the people sitting there. Anybody else uh, from the audience, if they have something to ask or any comments? So, Parth, I think Akola DTO is on the call. Dr. Manish, he okay. was posting some things in the chat about some best practices. Uh, I can't see him in the... Dr. Manish, are you here? Uh, yes, I think you'll have to unmute him. Yeah, he can unmute himself. Now, yeah. Okay. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Yes, sir, was, yeah, you, you can speak, sir. Yes. Yeah, a very good evening, sir. Sir, uh, I am a district tuberculosis officer from uh, Akola, Maharashtra. Uh, in Maharashtra, we are uh, 
like uh, what we have done in maharashtra is that from the state level we have uh, been allotted uh, divisional nodal officers for this uh, particular initiatives so we have uh, uh, eight officers who are there uh, we are the headquarter uh, district tv officers who are uh, monitoring this initiative from uh, for the four five districts and uh, we are collecting some of the good practices from these four five districts and uh, uh, some of the good practices that i can enumerate is first of all uh, one of the practices that the patient support groups that we have formed uh, in the villages in the like for example in akola i have 35 uh, villages i have formed a patient support groups in those villages and uh, we take a monthly review vc for all of them so uh, it's a group of around uh, 200 people some 150 odd people join the uh, vc we just uh, initially for the first month we gave them a sensitization what all activities are to be done in this what is the role of jas what is the role of uh, vhnsc patient support group role and from the next month onwards what we have done is that we have uh, we are taking a review of their progress related to the number of sputum collection any x rays uh, and uh, if a patient comes positive tpt and other follow ups with this so we have got some very good uh, uh, response from the field also the another thing is recently we we are uh, uh, having the viksa bharat sankalp yatra so the district tuberculosis officer is the nodal officer for that particular uh, initiative so uh, it's a it's really a very good opportunity uh, under the viksit bharat sankalp yatra we have ic vans that are placed to they are going to two villages in a day and um, uh, whenever i get time like for all saturdays and sundays i visit that uh, van and uh, in that village we have uh, people from all department coming to that place we get a good platform we do screening we uh, take aishman bharat cards uh, along with screening of the other programs the tuberculosis screening ic for tuberculosis Uh, that is being done and a very uh, the niche mitra very novel initiative now we are having uh, many of the uh, sarpanch the gram panchayat sarpanch whom we have made uh, niche mitra in this during this uh, viksit bharat sampark abhiyan so definitely person turning to a niche mitra definitely he'll gets curiosity increases about tb he'll try to uh, discuss in the vhnsc uh he'll try to discuss in the janarogya samiti meetings of the sub centers the swc and uh, we are definitely finding some uh, queries are coming from the field and these queries are coming from the gram panchayats the uh, janarogya samiti members queries are relating uh, um, relating to some medicines uh, they have some patients with symptoms there are extra pulmonary cases that they are uh, they they are uh, suspecting that this person is uh, like uh, these are the all things that are we are getting from the patient support group members the gram panchayat members and uh, these are uh, specifically uh, from the uh, tb muk panchayat uh, selected the villages and uh, again it's been a very good uh, opportunity that uh, uh, never before a district uh, like uh, i am here since uh, around one and a half years as a district tuberculosis officer before that i was a Uh, medical officer of tu that is a taluka health officer and was dealing with tuberculosis also that time also but i have never seen or heard about uh, the uh, gram panchayat members talking to a district tuberculosis officer so we have made a very good connect with uh, at least 35 uh, villages even today in the afternoon i had been to one village we <laughs> discussed the progress of the uh, initiative like this month <laughs> the, uh, some of the activities school activities some pending activities that were done and we are definitely having and the uh, same things we are discussing with our vhnsc also so uh, with the vhnsc uh, secretary also and the janarogya uh, samiti secretary also so we are here we are getting some very good uh, sort of response but the thing is um, definitely we have to spare uh, some time we have to uh, pick up all the calls that are like that are coming from this uh, say uh, the gram panchayat members or the sarpanch or the newer uh, nikshay mitras that we have pre- prepared so if they uh, they are also uh, very enthusiastic to see that 
uh, say a class one officer from the district is coming to a, their panchayat, they are talking to them, they are, di- we are, they are discussing their problems, not only related to tuberculosis, but even related to any other issues uh, that they discuss in their uh, VHNSC. And we are definitely having some very good um, activities here. Sir, another uh, one, two things, if we have time. Uh, regarding some uh, OR, uh, uh, I have been thinking since last two, two three months about uh, uh, having some topics uh, related to uh, uh, where we can uh, go through. One of them was uh, screen, uh, the uh, prospective screening of uh, tuberculosis in ANCs. Like, uh, that, that is one of the topics that uh, I have been... Uh, like uh, planning to go through and uh, today there was a discussion about over also how we can go it um, plan some of the activities uh, while we are uh, already doing this uh, tb mukta bharat initiatives so definitely this but that part of the lecture was also uh, very informative uh, and uh, maybe in due uh, due next few months uh, uh, I'll be trying to come up with some of the power proposal also uh, relating to this particular initiative. So uh, we have we have lot more things that we are doing. Use of Facebook, use of Twitter, use of WhatsApp, uh, social media, the newspaper, everything uh, that we are trying to do um, in my in my place. And uh, as a collective effort, we are uh, sharing it with our. Uh, nodal officers from the other divisions also. I am getting some very good uh, inputs from their part also. Like uh, we all in the uh, starting, we also heard from uh, Pune what uh, support that they are providing to the field. Again, that was uh, one of the uh, initiative that was discussed in our uh, regional meeting that we had. So thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manish, uh, for your comments. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Shiva from uh, CTD. Uh, sir, if you would like to share some thoughts, any comments? Yeah, hi. Um, so my thought on the overall topic, yes, uh, subnational certification, team panjayat, all these serve as a good tool of uh, local uh, for local advocacy as well as for gaining this political momentum. But uh, I don't think we should see it from an epidemiological point of view because that is a completely different um, uh, thought process. So, uh, and of course, I've put my comment also that uh, going alone as a vertical TV program, even after 2023, is not going to help the country on a whole. We need to talk from the point of uh, system strengthening, not just health system strengthening, uh, overall system strengthening in terms of improving the social, economical, nutritional, all those uh, factors which form the top five or six attributable uh, things. Na? So rather than having focused programs like anti-tobacco, anti-smoking, and I, unless you change the way people live, the people are housed, the people uh, work, I don't think their health behavior also is going to change. So that is what my uh, one point, one liner will be for this. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Shiva. At this point, I would le- just like to mention that I was recently uh, reading Dr. Nandini's uh, paper, which uh, analyzed the uh, social infrastructure improvement in Delhi, uh, which led to the um, led to the improvement uh, in TB uh, reportings and uh, TB outcomes, treatment outcomes. Uh, it is a very good paper. So, um, just wanted to mention about that. I think we already crossed uh, the time by 20 minutes. So I would just like the speakers to give one last closing statement. If there was one uh, sort of summarizing point or any uh, recommendation for this program going forward, uh, what would it be from your end? Uh, Dr. Rakesh, would you like to start? Yeah, I again re-emphasize that uh, local self-government has huge potential uh, in improving the health of the community, improving the health of the people around us. We need to focus on the process and making it a people's movement and system strengthening. Uh, and don't worry about all this uh, certification process. That's what my comment is. Thank you, sir. Dr. Heman? I, uh, my take would be looking at the bigger picture of involving VHSNCs in health. Uh, this would be a great opportunity for community action for health for TB and hope this will pay way for community action for other diseases, community action for universal health coverage, 
so many things. Uh, I can discuss about VHSNCs later, but I think we need to look at, you know, health as a whole. Uh, uh, this is, uh, I'll give you one quick feedback. Like we are evaluating ACF at national level for TB. The common comment we're getting is when we're investing so much resources for ACF for TB, why don't we do screening for hypertension, diabetes and risk factors? You know, so this vertical, vertical way of work, again, there are restrictions within the TB program because they are a TB program. It is above their level health or even multiple ministries need to work together. This is something we need to think about, you know, uh, working on systems, Siva also told, strengthening VHSNCs will have impact on multiple things. And just one more point of uh, taking what Dr. Nandini told, like one of the targets is more than 50 presumptive TB examinations per thousand. Say this works and this generates demand. Do we, and testing is not happening. Okay, so do we have any grievance redressal mechanism? You know, in for example, VHSNCs, Gram Panchas, where do they go? Like you are asking us to meet these targets of more than 50 per thousand, but to do this, we see many tests are not happening. Many people are coming and telling us they sent from PHC, they sent me to block, from block, they sent me to another block, that day LT was not there. You understand? So uh, where is the grievance redressal mechanism in this so that, you know, quote unquote, victim blaming does not happen here. Over. Thank you, Dr. Himan. Uh, Nandri, ma'am, any final thoughts from your side? It's truly empower the people. I think community medicine should take the lead because true empowerment is what is going to lead to good health because all these grievance suggestion mechanism that you just said would be because the politicians are there and they are the ones who should be the grievance suggestion uh, mechanism. But the problem is we do not take health seriously at all. So if you truly empower people and tell them that health, you know, COVID did it happen. But after that, I think we lost it again. Most Indians are reactive. The moment we have a serious health problem or any health problem, that's the time we seek action. Disease, disease care. We are just not bothered about health. We are bothered about sickness. So that has to change in the medical curriculum as well as in the patient's language. Thank you, ma'am. Swati, closing words from you. Yeah, so just uh, hope that all these initiatives, uh, as uh, ma'am said, uh, creates sort of awareness and this really comes as a felt need from the community uh, that health becomes prioritized rather than sickness, as ma'am said, uh, health becomes prioritized and the demand for these services uh, for a better public health infrastructure and for better programs in general, um, that, that comes from uh, the community community itself as a felt need and people demand for it and uh, the govern governments are held accountable uh, right from the local uh, governments to the center like they they show accountability so uh, let's hope that all these initiatives contribute to that ultimately not only for tb for every other program as well thank you thank you Swati. uh thank you everybody for joining today on a saturday evening one thing which has come out very strongly is awareness and that is uh, the mission that Navarna is working on to uh, promote need generation through awareness to be telling people about uh, that public health is important. It, it involves everything. Uh, there is a link in the chat box for feedback. Uh, it'll be great if you can just give us some feedback if there's anything that uh, you want us to do or any comments on our work so far. Please also check out our work on our website. Uh, we write at least once a week on important issues. Uh, we connect stories for you uh, with public health matters so that uh, you can understand them better. Once again, thank you so much for joining. Thanks to all the speakers for taking out time on a Saturday evening. And uh, thank you for a wonderful discussion today. And we'll uh, see you for the next forum. Uh, thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you to the audience. Bye. Bye. Bye.